Hello Australia and welcome back to the Tartan Couch. I'm Dave Robbo, this is Mossy and we're here for episode two of Road to Glasgow and I can tell you Mossy, it's only 153 days until the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games. Great to be back here on the Tartan Couch with you mate. Absolutely Robbo, I haven't slept since the last uh, Road to Glasgow. This is episode two, they've allowed us to continue on which is fantastic and if you didn't notice last week, we've actually got a uh, third player here on the couch. Yeah, tell us a little bit about who this is, Mossy. We, we were a bit uh, rude last week. We didn't introduce you to who our friend is. So this here is our good mate, Clyde. He's actually the mascot for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, as we like to call them, the Double the X Games. Um, and he is a thistle, of course, and he's named after the river that runs straight through the heart of Glasgow, which is called Clyde. So this is Clyde. Clyde, g'day to everyone. He doesn't say much. Clyde. No, he doesn't say a lot, but he's, got, he's on Twitter, would you believe it, Mossy? And, uh, I don't can, believe it. You can get him at Clyde on tour, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to follow all his antics. He's out here basically on a, a tour of all the great rivers of the Commonwealth. So he started off the tour here in Australia, and we'll uh, hopefully be taking him around to some of the, the key rivers of the Commonwealth here in Australia. Let's hope that he gets out to the Macquarie River. Yeah, well, you can only hope so. Uh, mate, quick uh, spot of news, and then we've got a, a new segment, the news in 90 seconds, and did you see... The pole vault, Sergei Bubka, never thought that record would ever go, Mossy, as I blow away the flies. We are in Australia. Sergei Bubka's record has been blown out of the water by Frenchman Renaud La Villainy. La Villainy. Now, there's some confusion here in Australia, and I've got to say, it wasn't Richie Benno who broke the record. There's been a lot of confusion, and we had to put that out there uh, on social media. So if you missed it, it wasn't Richie. Uh, he's given up the pole vault these days. He was one of the greatest vaulter uh, that Sydney has ever seen. Back in, I think, 1962, he was uh, training up. There was an accident. He uh, put the bowl in the box, and there was a bit of an issue, and uh, hasn't been seen pole vaulting since. It was indoors, uh, but uh, unfortunately he won't be re- competing for France in the Glasgow Com Games, but Joel Pocklington uh, will be joining, hopefully Steve Hooker. They're our Aussie representatives and watch those boys go I, in Glasgow. I was Glasgow. wondering if it's a bit like uh, the Winter Games where we can actually just uh, get some imports like Dale Begg-Smith and he, he could become our next Steve Hooker. Let's get Renault on the strength of Richie Beno. Let's get <laughs> Renault out here. We could maybe naturalise him just in time. Staying overseas, Mossy, a whole band of Aussies are over there in the collegiate system, the NCAA in the States, and they are setting the world on fire. We had Geordie Williams, sub four minute mile, 356.8 for the win. Uh, that was our representing uh, Villanova, the the proud running college there, and that was at Iowa State. Steve Solomon in the 400, ran his first ever 400 indoors, came out with a 46-41 to win the Husky Classic in Seattle, Washington. So a great run there. Uh, We've got a little bit of video. You can see Steve here just finishing off the race and uh, very upright, Mossy, a bit like the Michael Johnson but great to see how he uh, negotiated his way around the indoor track. One thing I noticed, about, as you'll see the footage here, is the fact that he, he's got nothing uh, in terms of technique like Scott Westcott. No, that's right. Uh, and he's been a big influence, I think, but he's stayed away from the technique. Uh, and also at the Husky Classic, Kevin Batt from uh, just down the road on the, the central coast. 3,000 metres, he took that out. You remember he took that out at the Hunter Track Classic as well, Mossy. Finished with a 7.52 and has his eyes on the prize of a Com Games qualifier uh, later on in the year. Well, he absolutely smoked them at uh, the Hunter Track Classic. And a lot of people were saying, you know, where's he come from? What's he been doing? And, yeah, been over there in the college, college system and absolutely smashing it. Now, listen, some big, big news during the week. Uh, Tams and Lewis Manu has announced on social media that her and her husband, Graham Manu, who got a uh, test cap in cricket and uh, one of the great cricketers uh, in the Sheffield Shield and uh, the, a range of different crickets out there these days, they've actually uh, they've been busy and they've found themselves uh, with a pending baby. Oh, That's, how good's that? Great news. I think the entire athletics and sporting community around Australia is just marvelling at the fact that how good's this little kid going to be uh, running 400s and, and wicket-keeping for Australia? Pressure's on. Absolutely. Uh, well, look, I think we should bring it back, more of this uh, dual Australians. Yeah. Definitely. And, and I look, Mossy, we, we had Tamsin on this very couch at the Hunter Track Classic, and I like to think this probably increased the, uh, the fertility rates and has seen uh, <laughs> the, uh, the pending baby announcement come out this week. Well, according to her blog, this was actually, uh, could have been the moment, Robbo. This inspired her, the sweat that's on here. She was actually well, pregnant we, at the time. We didn't even know. Graham Manu was watching he was tweeting, you know, the whole bit was going on. So I, I, we're going to have to stop there because it's too much. Well, I don't want to stop there okay. because something uh, that has been inspiring, uh, Jana Pittman uh, competed in the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, came 14th. How good is that in the final? I saw a statistic during uh, the week that the Australians were using a bobsled 
that they got for, I think, $50,000, whereas the Americans uh, have one by BMW, which is $24 million. So if you put that into comparison, and let's face it, uh, athletics is one of those sports in particular in the track where, you know, everyone's against everyone. It is a pure sport, whereas these type of sports, equipment is everything. So that's great. She's talking about going to Rio as well and wants to come back uh, for the next Winter Olympics, which we're talking about could well be either in Threadbow or Lithgow. There you go. Well, and uh, we went a little bit over 90 seconds there, Mossy. We'll work on uh, reeling that back in for next week. <laughs> but that is the news in 90 seconds. Get Mossy and Robo to Glasgow now. Now it's time to go back down to Adelaide where we have the Adelaide Track Classic. And Mossy, this is a little segment we like to call the rub down. Uh, we need to recover, we need to have our rub down and uh, just, I guess, reflect on all the action that happened down there at Adelaide. And uh, who better to have a chat to than Paddy Bergen, who was himself down there. He was our field marshal, he was the field announcer. And uh, what about we give Paddy a call? Get him on the phone, my friend. So this over here is uh, the Road to Glasgow uh, phone. It was yeah. made in Glasgow. Invented in Glasgow, I believe. On a road, yes. Paddy. Yes, mate, how are you going? It's Robbo here. Robbo and Mossy on the Tartan couch. You remember the couch? Yes, that's right, mate. Look, buddy, tell us a little bit about what happened down in Adelaide. Uh, you were down there. What were your highlights, mate? Uh, well, Kim Nickel and Catherine Mitchell in the women's javelin with yeah. um, world-class performances. Now, tell, yes. us about, tell us about it. You were down there covering the, the field events, specifically calling the action, and uh, Catherine Mitchell comes out and just blows everyone away with a 66-10 opening throw. Must have been pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was huge. And, uh, look, I, I won't say it's unexpected because Mitchell, you know, she battled injuries, but, um, you know, she was fifth in the world champs last year, so she's a classy competitor. Um, but both of them were making their debuts, and to make a season debut and then bang out, um, you know, Almost strain wreck on the first first row was um, absolutely huge, um, and um, and yeah, and then it, 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 the competition was quite exciting. The, the youngster Robert, she uh, seemed a bit nervous all the way through it, um, and uh, I guess the first time she's thrown against them uh, since she's thrown sixty meters, mm-hmm. so um, she struggled a little bit, um, and then uh, and then Mickle um, launched her uh, whopping sixty six twelve. Uh, in the third round, so yeah, it was um, yeah, it was great to actually be up up close and personal with them. I was I was down there um, the whole competition. Well, mate, we we de- we look forward to uh, catching up on the tartan couch once again, and uh, yeah, keep keep the calls coming in and keep tweeting the meat. No worries, good to talk to you, Robert. All right, mate, take it easy. Paddy Bergen, what he's just a professional, isn't he? Oh, he's an absolute legend. Uh, tweet the meat. He invented that hashtag. Uh, was a former 100 metres uh, national finalist as Win- well. Winner of the Maxfield gift. Mossy, let's not forget that. And some would say that's probably the greatest gift uh, in New South Wales, maybe even in Australia as well. That's right. And great to see Paddy. He's obviously a bit biased uh, with the field events. That was where he was on the weekend. But you called it the, the Hunter uh, the Adelaide Field Classic, and it looks like it lived up to that. Not only the javelin and the women's discus. Uh, Alana, Bol- Alana Boyd uh, with a great... Com Games B, and almost an A as well. She had a great uh, pole vault and uh, a number of other great results down there. But Sally Pearson, you, she, I know you're a big fan, Mossy, and she caught your eye. I just love the grit and the determination of uh, Sally Pearson and, and the way she's going to bounce back from uh, the ACT Territory Championships that, that happened there where Mel Breen in 11-11 uh, defeated her. I think it was the first time in nine years. So Sally's going to be really fired up. Down there at Adelaide, she won the 100 and 200 double. I think it was 11.34 for the 100. So she's not too far off a PB. That's 0.2 of a second. So I think it sets up for a fantastic Perth Track Classic coming up this weekend. Well, Mossy, I actually spoke to Sally uh, during the last couple of weeks, and I just wanted to get inside her head to understand what was going on there at the ACT Champs. And she said she couldn't figure out... ACT is a territory, but we're at the state champs. And before she knew it, she'd missed the start and Breen was away. And so, you know, I think over there in, in Perth, uh, she'll, she'll have that cleared up out of her head. She's been doing some mental training and uh, I think she'll really take it to Breen this weekend. And we promise we're going to move on from that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mossy, uh, so we had Breen, Ralph. Uh, Ralph, you know, a, a name synonymous with excellence here in Australian men's 800 metres runners. Just last week, Ralph Dobell, the great Ralph Dobell, who still holds the 800 metre record here in Australia. Uh, 1968 Games in Mexico where he won the gold. Well, 
this isn't Ralph Dobell, this is Joshua Ralph, and he blitzed it uh, coming away there at the end from uh, Alex Rowe, the row down as we called it, and he was just too classy. Really looking forward to seeing the rematch between those boys uh, at the Perth Track Classic this Saturday night. Listen, uh, I was just wondering if you remember, maybe a little bit before your time, the, uh, the TV show Alf. I do remember. Yeah, the, yep. thir- the third Alf. Yes. Yeah, he came crashing down to earth and uh, look, you know, probably uh, went on to be one of the great characters uh, of all time. There you go. So not quite Ralph, but Alf. Uh, what, about Ma- in the, what about in the 400s, well, Bobo? The, the Queensland trifecta, and we talked about that uh, last week, didn't was. we? Yeah, and we saw some great previews on Twitter. Dylan Grant snuck in there for second. Uh, so Burns held on. with. Uh, I was actually impressed that we managed to get his 100th Twitter follow during the week. That was us, Mossy and Robbo, at Mossy and Robbo. So uh, Burns got the win. Dylan Grant uh, second, Alex Beck in third. So we look forward to seeing those guys progressing throughout the rest of the tour as well. And Mossy, to cap it all off, the women's 5,000 final event down there in Adelaide. And uh, it was a Kiwi came home there with Camille Buscombe in a 1556 from Maddie Heiner and uh, Emily Brickacek from the ACT took out the third. Quickly, in other 5,000 metre uh, news, the state titles in New South Wales, Kate Spencer dropped a bomb. Uh, 5,000 metre chance with a Commonwealth Games B qualifier, 1546.6. What do we got next? Robbo, it's time for us to move on to uh, the highlights for this weekend's Go For 2 and 5 Perth Track Classic, which we're going to be there on the live stream. If you want to get in contact with us, at Mossy and Robbo, hashtag Tartan Couch. Okay, we're here on the Tartan Couch. We're actually going to take it all the way over there to Perth. It's excess baggage, but we don't care about that. That's just the way it is. But what I want to do is I want to bring back the segment 4x100, where I'm going to actually talk you through, Robbo, um, four interesting facts about the state, the city, the meat, or the people. So we're going to get out of the blocks. We'll start off with, uh, with this one, uh, Robbo. Did you know that Perth in itself is the most isolated city in the entire world? So there you go. The, the Perth Track Classic's got to be the most furthest away from any other track classic or track event in the world. Now, it's going to be quite warm there on the weekend. They're talking sunny and 30, or uh, between 30 and 34, which takes me to the next point. Not only is it the most isolated capital city in the world, but the sunniest capital city in the world with an average of eight hours of sun every single day with the sun setting over the water just to cap it off. I'm going to have to pull you up here because you've called it the 4 by 100 uh, I'm pretty sure you've gone just a little bit over the 100 characters there. Uh, but may- maybe you can prove this by sticking a few tweets up and we'll see just how many characters you are indulging in. Moving on to the preview of the go for 2 and 5. And we've got the two bits of fruit in. If you're watching at home wondering what is this go for 2 and 5 all about, well, it's an initiative trying to encourage people to eat better, uh, namely two bits of fruit and five pieces of vegetables every day. We've got the banana down here. That's a staple here on the tartan couch. We've got the orange. But uh, we thought what we'd do is go through the five, representing the five pieces of vegetables that you need to have every day. And, and the have... key thing is too, Robert, if you have these five vegetables, different colours, you get all the vitamins, nutrients, antioxidants, fibres, water, all that stuff that you need to keep things healthy, in particular your bowels, uh, and just check every day, you've got your five, you should be able to get a fluffy floater when you go and do uh, <laughs> your business in the toilet. Thank, thank you, Mossy. That's going a little bit uh, too far. But moving back... The Clyde five, told me that. The, oh, thanks, Clyde. The five uh, highlights of this week's Go For Two and Five Perth Track Classic. And we're excited, Mossy. I saw the event list come out weeks ago and the start list just a couple of weeks ago. This is going to be an absolute cracker. Kicking us off is, the, we better mention, the women's 100-metre hurdle. So Sally Pearson, as we've mentioned, but... The local threat over there in WA, the six-time state champion, Shannon McCann. And uh, we're big fans of the McCann. And uh, the, the tilt there, McCann came out, out to the Hunter Track Classic, had a great run there. Uh, and last weekend, Mossy, she took out her six consecutive WA state champs in a PB and Com Games uh, B qualifier, and she'll be pretty fired up. But I thought we might have a quick chat with her. Get her on the phone, Robo. Can we do that? Can we well, have we have we got the ability to get all the way over there to the most isolated this, capital in the world? This is the thing. I think it's going to take a bit of effort, but uh, we'll see. Uh, what's the code again? I don't even know. I'll see what it, see what it can do. Are you flies? Yeah, Shannon. Yeah, g'day. It's, it's uh, Robbo here from Mossy and Robbo. Yeah, we're on the Tartan couch. Can't so, make... Sorry, Robbo, we've also got oh, Clyde. Clyde here too. Sorry, you'll meet him. Yeah, we're coming over to Perth this weekend. Look, I just wanted to congratulate you on all your you know, recent great performances, especially last week at the WA State Champs. You're on fire at the moment. Tell us, what's your secret? <laughs> um, my coach, I guess. <laughs> 
He's the secret to success for sure. So, Coach Jason Moyles doing some fantastic things there, and uh, you're obviously looking forward to this Saturday night. Racing Sally this weekend, I'm super excited about it. Every time she races, you know, she brings a whole new level to the competition. She lifts everyone and the whole quality of the field lifts with her. So and I always learn something new about myself when I race her. So not many people get to say they race the Olympic champ, you know, domestically all the time. So I'm glad that I have, you know, that opportunity. I think hurdling in Australia at the moment is on their eyes. So, you know, we've got Michelle, we've got Brianna coming through as well. You know, Abby's doing a really good job as well. So in the next few years, you'd think that hurdles would be one of the highlight events for sure. And tell us about the A qualifier. You must be, uh, you know, keen to give that a bit of a shake, especially on Saturday night. It's 13.10. Uh, you got that in your sights? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm really just trying to focus on the process and, you know, try and get all of the aspects of my race right. I'll keep the time at the back of my head. Um, you know, I want that definitely before nationals. I don't want to rely on a big qualifier or an AA to select me at the first, um, you know, the initial selection for Glasgow. So... I'm going to need the A to do that. And, you know, with Sally next to me, if I can't do it then, then, you know, I really need to put in some hard work. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this new blue track. Yeah, so it's they just relayed it over the old um, surface, which I didn't know that they could actually do. But apparently it's exactly what they did in Canberra as well, and it worked wonders for that track. So the track's really good. If we, conditions are perfect, I reckon we'll see a few A's dropped on the weekend. Yeah, awesome. Can't wait to see that. And uh, we'll, we'll be over there. The Tartan Couch will be there, track side. So we look forward to hopefully having a catch-up with you over there and uh, be prepared to throw on the funny Scottish hat uh, if you do get that <laughs> A or B qualifier. And I want to know, what are you planning to do with your hair? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the hairdressers on Friday. So my up. training partners were hassling me at training yesterday, asking me what I was doing. But I never like to give it away, just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and it just looks like crap and we have to do something else. So. Well, all the very best onwards to Glasgow, and we hope to see you book your flight uh, as part of the Aussie team over there in Glasgow. And with a name like McCann, uh, we reckon you'll fit, <laughs> yeah. you'll fit right in over there in Scotland. Yeah, I know. I'll be like one of the locals. <laughs> there you go. We might even have to, if I get there early on uh, on Saturday, we might have to see if you're prepared to race in the Scottish hat um, and represent, <laughs> represent McCann. I don't know how much it would slow you down. <laughs> yeah, it might slow me down just a little bit too much, I think. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see how we go. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you over there and we definitely want to catch up on the Tartan couch if possible. Have a great race. Great, thank you. Now, the powers of the B Robbo have just instigated the, uh, the Australian flag to be dropped down. We know that Western Australia actually want to uh, move themselves away from Australia and, and they saw the Australian flag there and they thought, let's, let's get rid of it. There you go. Well, uh, we better get the WA one if we can. Now, what about over there at the Perth Track Classic, the go for two and five Perth, uh, Perth Track Classic? Uh, we will be trackside. Don't forget, hashtag Tartan Couch or Twitter handle at Mossy and Robbo. Uh, the women's 1500 metres. Yep. I love the uh, middle distances. Mel Duncan has been on fire this season. She's undefeated so far. She beat Zoe Buckman just a few weeks ago. You've also got Kayla McKnight and Kelly Hetherington, who's looking to uh, try to qualify for both the 800 and 1500 at the Com Games. Uh, Zoe Buckman, she very rarely gets beaten, Robbo, on home soil or anywhere by an Australian. She's going to be absolutely jumping out of her skin to uh, make sure that she is stomping herself on the ground as the number one 1,500-metre racer in Australia. Yeah, that, that is going to be a special race. Uh, just a quick one. Mel Duncan, I think she just got pipped at the Hunter uh, by Kayla McKnight. So she has had a loss this, this year, but she'll be hungry again. What's that? Clyde's got some mail here. Clyde's just throwing it out there that Kelly Hetherington uh, has uh, got a new coach on board uh, by the name of Craig Mottram. There you go. There you go. Little Clyde's on it, I'm no, telling you. He sails down a river and next thing you know, he's got some uh, little goss. You heard that first here on the Tartan Couch. Knows a thing or two about running that does that, man. And uh, Mossy, is it time for the second leg of the four by Hunchy? It certainly is, my friend. The second leg is the fact that Perth has the oldest operating mint in Australia. I think it was back in 1806 when the first uh, mint was uh, out there. You can go get a gold, silver or platinum coin made up for yourself right now if you want. Now, the women's javelin, Mossy, the special Ks, part two. This is going to be uh, near enough to being the highlight of the night. Again, there's A and B qualifiers just being thrown out there. Uh, we've got Yuki Ebihara, the Japanese uh, javelin national champ, coming out to push the likes of Kim Mickle, Catherine Ken Mitchell, Shark. and Kelsey Lee Roberts. So the, the special Ks will have Yuki to contend with. And if conditions are right, don't be surprised if we see some big throws and maybe that Australian record from the year 2000, uh, it might go 66.8. Well... These are the girls to do it.
Now, Mossy, have you got any more gold for us in oh, the 4 by 100 My friend, we're uh, in the leg three. We know this can make or break it. Uh, we talked last week, Adelaide uh, being the city of churches and pub, pubs. Um, this week, did you know that uh, Perth is known as the city of light? Well, Mossy, I had heard a bit of a whisper, but how did this uh, come to be? Take yourself back to 1962 when an astronaut, Glenn John, was orbiting the world. And we all know everyone was there um, talking about it in the newspaper, the wireless, uh, the ra- everywhere. It was just, you couldn't get enough of it. Uh, Perth wanted to put themselves on the map, so they were encouraged to uh, put all their lights on. So as he was orbiting, uh, he could see Perth uh, from outer space. There you go. Well, Just under 100 characters, I think. <laughs> and 62 was a big year because, as you can see down here, 62 was the year Perth hosted the Empire and Commonwealth Games. Well, it wasn't the Commonwealth Games back there. It was the Empire Games. They were, they were great games, and they, uh, they're still talking about them now. And uh, so, yeah, great fact there about the City of Light. Uh, Mossy, you're a big fan of the Women's 100, and this has been all the talk around the media. Breen v Pearson. How do you think that one's going to play out? This is going to be absolutely down and out. The meet, uh, race of the meet. I just can't wait for this one. Mel Breen, she has just laid out an Australian record, 11-11. We all know about that. Uh, Sally Pearson, her PB, 11-14. That had a tailwind of 1.7, same as Breen. Uh, that was set in 2007 in Osaka. So it was a long time between drinks as far as that PB goes. But the thing is that Sally is such a determined young lady she would have been fuming back for the last couple of weeks and thinking hang on I need to get out there I need to get myself back on the podium now the little caveat to this is the fact Robbo that she uh, has the um, in world indoors coming up in Sopot uh, in early March so you know she's got to be careful with a build up with the preparation but she would hate to find herself two meets in a row being beaten by Mel Breen. Look, it's, it's got the potential to define, uh, redefine athletics and, and, and women's short sprint athletics here in, in, in Australia. And uh, look, maybe it's a bit too soon to call this a rivalry, um, but it's, it's got the makings of being what could be a, a fantastic rivalry. Absolutely. And Australian athletics needs, Australian sports needs a, a rivalry like this. Now, time for us to, to sprint home. Speaking of sprinting home in the 4x100, uh, here we go. Perth has the highest amount of self-made millionaires in the world. I believe you kept that to 100, so we'll keep it there. Well done, Mossy. Thank you for that. Rounding out the top five for the two, go for two and five Perth Track Classic, the men's 400, and it's hard to overlook this event, Mossy. We've, uh, we're welcoming LaShawn Merritt now. LaShawn, a dual uh, Olympic gold medalist uh, at Beijing, two-time 400-metre world champs, gold medalist as well. He's got a PB, which is pretty handy, 43.74. And, mate, he'll be looking to pull some of the, uh, the local lads, some of the Aussies around, into some qualifying times with a bit of luck. So the likes of Beck, Burns, uh, Rowe and Offerens, uh, it's going to be a, a great race and, and they'll be all trying to keep up with uh, LaShawn as we've, we've almost lost another flag. <laughs> we might have to get Clyde to just hold up the, uh, <laughs> the flag there just to make sure it uh, sticks up. Mossy, I should just mention also in the 400, but this time with some hurdles in the road, uh, we've got from Dominican Republic, Felix Sanchez, now another you know, legend of the sport. Uh, he, he'll be going around. He's, he's won dual Olympic gold and also world champs. He's back-to-back gold. This, oh, is yeah. this guy is one of the biggest names ever to come so, to Australia. Well done, Besides Athletics. Besides Scott Westcott. Well done, Athletics Australia. Well done, Athletics WA, for getting these guys here. And uh, it's going to be absolutely exciting to see these guys in action. Tristan Thomas will have his work cut out uh, to, to keep up with Felix Sanchez. But if there's anyone can do it from Australia, he's the man. I know he's a big favourite of yours, the Flying Ranger. Now, don't forget... As we move forward to Perth, it's really your responsibility to get your two and five in, okay? So bananas, apples, pears, nectarines. Broccoli. Whatever. Well, they're the they're, oh, two. We're going for the two. Yep. And you can choose just two of those or your broccoli, your cabbage, uh, your cauliflower. You've got your zucchini. There's a whole, oh, it's Brussels sprouts, squash, everything that's... Radish. Your, gra- your radish. Mm. Well, how could I forget the radish? Mm. The humble radish out there amongst mm. uh, the beetroots for the blue colours. Uh, get amongst them and have yourself that uh, healthy bow. That's right. And don't forget, you can catch us with the next live stream. Sorry, blowing away the flies again. Uh, we'll be there trackside at the Perth Track Classic with the Tartan Couch, with Clyde in tow. You'll be able to catch us from 6.30pm WA time, which is 9.30 here in New South Wales, 8.30 up, uh, up there in Queensland. Tune in to Athletic 
athletics.com.au or onto our website, mossyandrobbo.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Mossy and Robbo, and follow hashtag Tartan Couch on any stream of social media you can find. And uh, don't forget Clyde, at Clyde on tour. He wants a bit of love as well. And Mossy, it's been a pleasure once again, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again on the road to Glasgow.